Hi, I'm Alan Rich. And I'm Judd Friedman. And, and this, this is BMI's, BMI's How, How I Wrote That Song. And the song that we wrote is called Run To You, performed by Whitney Houston. In The Bodyguard. Uh, travel back in your minds to a time a couple of hundred years ago, I think it was. <laughs> Use your mental time machine, actually early 90s. Uh, an artist named Whitney Houston is doing her first movie, and a brief comes out, sent out by the film company and the record company. To all the publishers. Every publisher and songwriter, every credible publisher and songwriter in the world. Whitney Houston's doing a film, and she needs four songs. Uh, we get the brief. We go through those little squibs, no script, no video, nothing, just little squibs. We need a song about this for this scene. We need a song about this for this scene, et cetera, et cetera. And... Um, like every other song around the world, we scurry down to our little studio and we start writing and churning stuff out. And, and, and at that time, it just so happens, it coincided with a breakup I had in my own life. So I had this title called Run To You. And I we brought it to Judd. And we write a song called Run To You, which is originally is intended as a breakup song for the end of the film, when Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston split up, if you remember the film. And the original lines were, I want to run to you, I want to run to you, just like I always did before. Come knocking at your door, I want to run to you, how I want to come to you but you're not there to run to anymore. Right. So we write this song and we're pretty excited about it. We do a very rough demo of it, right? We just felt like it captured the vibe. And then we decided we wanted to try to get it directly to Clive Davis, who's record record company executive extraordinaire, who had right. signed and discovered Whitney Houston, the most successful, most sophisticated record company executive in the world. And we didn't have any, a way to really get to him, but our publisher, my publisher for MCA, Carol Ware, knew his right-hand guy, Jerry Griffith. And so we, we strategized and said, we think if Jerry loves a song, he'll put it on Clive's desk. And Jerry loved the song and he put it on Clive's desk. And Alan comes home one day to a very nice voicemail from a guy named Clive Davis. And it says, hi, Alan. This is a very nice message I think you're gonna like. Um, we really like your song. And so does Whitney. Please call me, I'm at the Beverly Hills Hotel. So we are doing like the happy dance all over right. our houses, <laughs> thinking we're in. Not so, so fast. fast. So we call Clive and he says, love it, love it, love it. It's great. Just one little thing. Okay, what's the one little thing? Can you make it sound a little more like a Whitney Houston record? So we said, well, what do you mean by that? What does that mean? So he says, you know, like a Whitney Houston record. So we go, oh yeah, of course, like we need, you've got no problem, babe. So we hang up and we're like, what the hell? Now remember, this is the most sophisticated record executive in history. That's all he's got for us in terms of communication. Big lesson there. So we, the only thing we can think is... That it needs more production, like a drum. Right. You know, because it really was a, an out of time piano Very vocal. basic. We just had the vibe. I just sat down and played. I just felt my way through it. And we put vocals, some strings, an old Proteus sample guitar on it. and. It just felt good. He said, make it sound more like a... But it was so out of time. We get, we hire a very good friend of ours who's a fantastic drummer named Reed Vertelny. Right. Comes in the studio and what was a three and a half minute song. It was a four hour session. Because drum. I want to run to you. It was like every bar was out of time. It was, there was no click track. So we finally made it feel kind of seamless. It was, in fact, when we were making the record, David Foster called me and said, can we just use the demo? And I said, well, it's out of time. And he said... I thought there was something going on there, so we had to remake it from scratch in time. But that's another story. Anyway. So we so throw we it in like Flint. And we give it to Clive. Clive he loves it. Loves it. And so we thought, we've got that's it made. It. Not then, so fast. We're in, the, in the studio, <laughs> working on a Ray Charles record. Phone rings. It's the director of The Bodyguard, a guy, British guy named Mick Jackson. Right. And he says, I love the song. He's the sweetest guy in the world. Love the songs. It's just one little thing. And our hearts go, oh. God. Oh my God. What, what, well, that one little thing. thing. And he really said this. He said, it wouldn't be too hard to rewrite the whole lyric, right? Because we changed it from a breakup scene to a take a chance on me scene. We want it to be early in the film where they're just falling in love instead of falling apart. So what and was our response? No, no problem, problem, babe. Right. right? So we get <laughs> off the phone and our hearts we pick ourselves up off the floor. We realize oh we got to make this work. Why does it have to be so hard? <laughs> and Clive says, don't worry, you guys. Love the song so much. It's a hit. If it doesn't work, the new version doesn't work for the film. We'll use it on her greatest hits record, which is coming out in a year, right? Reality. Asterisk. It took nine years for the greatest hits record, right? right. So we so knew we didn't want to. We were like, we got to make this one. Yeah. This is Whitney Houston. It's her first record, her first a movie. We're not it's letting this huge. slide. No way we're going to let this go away. So we so, knew we had to keep Run to You. And Clive said, please send me the rewritten version before 
for approval before you send it to Mick Jackson. We did. We Clyde knew, loved we it. He to, said he was we proud of us. We wrote everything. We knew we had to keep Run To You. We did, I want to run to you. We had to keep that. It was just, that was the core of the song. And yes, we wrote everything else. By the way, Judd did keep Ooh Ooh. Yeah, that, we was did. Judd. that was Judd. That was, that was all written in there. Right. It was an ad lib. Anyway. So, anyway, Clyde loves it. The film company loves it. We get in the studio with Whitney. She walks in. She's got a cold. She can barely talk. Sits down and says, hey, can you teach me the song? And of course, she knew the song. And I'm glad they asked Judd because I would have fainted. But they asked Judd if he could go in the vocal booth and do a scratch vocal for Whitney. And, you know, um, uh, David Foster was there. Um, Gary Lamel was there. The heads of the film company, the heads of the music department of the film company, the heads of the record company, Kevin, Kevin Costner, his entourage, Whitney, her entourage, and everybody's looking at me, so I went and did it. They give me a little applause, ovation at the end, <laughs> just because I got through it. And uh, then we record the vocal with her, and every other minute she's going, it, she's such a doll to work with, so amazing. She's like, am I doing this right? Is it cool? And I'd be, everyone looks at me, what do you it say? It was extraordinary. Because she every was, every mistake was so great, but then I'd be like, well, maybe we could change the, it's a, the melody should be. A, but, but she was just amazing to but, work with. But you know, and David Foster did an incredible job. Yes. And um, and then we went, uh, we were invited to the... Um, the shoot of the scene. Of where the, she's running you know, through the clouds. In that white outfit. And she yeah. looked so breathtakingly beautiful. And we got nominated for an Oscar. She sent us two dozen roses. She was just, it was just lovely. And so that's how we wrote Run, Run to you. you. And that's the story. And I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>